from a bell fight. So that is yeah, that just, that is my mistake for not clarifying that I was referring to the city of Bell So okay. Um, do you have anything further on that? No, I'm not. On that specific. Okay. So the next. One. I'm just, I know we have the discussion. I know we have a uh, ordinance or resolution that we did on how, what the proper procedure is for someone to file a complaint. <coughs> Hold on, let's not move on just yet. Wasn't there a, um, I thought you had on the agenda about the, um, the school. the next one down. Well, can we just discuss the disclaimer since we're already on time? Sure. Um, but it kind of goes with the, num the number three there. Oh, with the complaint. Um, so I had someone uh, send me photos and I reached out to Brad because I don't, I don't know what seven font is on a sign. It's pretty small. Um, but they they sent me two pictures of two candidate signs, and one of them you can you can't read it, but you can see that it's there. Mm -hmm. But the other one you really can't even see it's there until you really zoom in. And what they stood on this sidewalk here and took a photo of this, and still can't read it, but you can at least see that there's something there, and. The person was just wondering, is that not something that you should be able to see that it's there from the road? Not read it, but there. Yeah, and, and, so and Brad said, you know, it needs to be seven font, but I don't know what seven font is on a sign to know. I just, originally she, this candidate didn't have anything on her signs. So I did go to her and say, you need to have that endorsement on there. You don't have to reprint anything. You can put a sticker on there. You can, I know some other people have done stickers, um, or you can just write it on there. It doesn't matter. It just needs to be on there so it can be seen. Yeah. So I, and I, because this candidate called me <coughs> to ask about that, and I commended you for, to the candidate for reaching out. I said, she, she could have just gone to the prosecutor and brought it to us, and we would have gone to the prosecutor with a five thousand dollar fine for not having it on there. But I say kudos for to her for mentioning it to you so that you could fix it. Knowing and she that was confused. In, she thought well, if she didn't order a hundred signs, she didn't need it. That's what she told me. That yeah, that's. Her and I said, well, that's for. That's for mail. Yeah. So when I explained that to her, you know, she thanked me, thanked me, thanked me for. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't. It, again, it's not a gotcha. It's like, hey, right. You got to have this on there. So, and I went on my way in this morning. I went by a few of her signs because she had told me that she had a friend like mm -hmm. with a paintbrush paint that on, which is really good for what they did. The ones that they painted on is a little small. It's at least seven font because I could read it. Okay. from my car okay. not that, driving that by my... I stopped okay. you could read it you could tell that it was there but it wasn't but the statute says that it has to be well it says 12 in one area and then seven on another so it says that it has to contrast which it did right. contrast with the background and it has to be obvious and the ones that they painted on were a little less obvious than the others <clears throat> but when she reprinted signs, because she, I think she, there's 20 she did originally, and then she bought 20 more. And when they did the 20 more, those signs, you can tell a dramatic difference. Those signs actually, the font well, is bigger. Right. Okay. Um, well, like I said, it's not a formal complaint. I was just, want, I mean, I didn't know how to answer the person because the endorsement is on there. And as Brad also indicated, you would be hard pressed to right. determine seven font. So, I, you know, they they weren't. At first, they didn't even notice that it was on there because.
because it was so small. But when they stopped and looked, then they could see that it was so on there. That's 11, and that's really small. So seven is a lot smaller than that. Um, the argument would be, if it's seven font, is it obvious? Right. Probably not on a now on a uh, on a mailing seven font sure, mm -hmm. um, but on a sign seven font's awful small. <clears throat> no, that's not going to be obvious. But it is obvious if you have a sticker on the sign. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I it mean, at least obvious. you know it's on there right. that you can right. see. Hey, there's something on there. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, like I said, it's not a formal complaint. I was just I didn't know how to answer her. I mean, it, it is on there. Yeah, I and think it would it's come not, on. It's not very legible as far as being able to, if you're driving, you can't see it. If you're walking by it, you can't see it. You've got to walk up to it. Yeah. But I don't, I didn't think it, it violated anything, but. I think it, it would end up being a call for the board if there was a, a formal complaint. I agree. Submitted, and then. We would make a determination whether is it is it obvious. Mm -hmm. um, that was that was that was where I was going to, but I wasn't going to just make that decision. I right. wanted to at least bring it to you so that you knew that there was a question. Again, not a formal complaint. And I told her, you know, if if she wished to file a formal complaint, we would address it. But otherwise. I would take it as a question so that. And when the candidate called me, I didn't take it as her complaining that she said anything. Um, but more, I think she was just wanting to let me know that in case if there was a complaint filed that, you know, I didn't know this and I corrected it, which that really should be done. If there's a complaint, there will be a hearing. Right. She should have brought it at that time. But regardless, they got fixed ahead of time, so. Yeah, I mean, I, she put them out, and I told her the same day, and I believe she removed them that night and fixed them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was done pretty quick. She said they did it the next day. Yep. So that's, I, I think the way I handled that, I, that was the way it should have been. It shouldn't have been yeah. anything formal. The way they do at things in point, India is not at, the way we're going to do things at in At some California. point, you just, you kind of do the right, and I would have done that for any other candidate as well. I mean, when you're a first time runner and you don't know the rules, right. and you haven't read the, I mean, you know, tell, even though we tell them, and read I, this, and this I is told important. this candidate on read the phone, it. I said, it's your responsibility as a candidate to read all the rules and to, to educate yourself on the requirements I said because there are mistakes that you can make that can cost mm -hmm. you a lot of money or even send you to jail so you better know what you're doing. Okay. And so that's a segue into the complaints procedure. And we yeah. do have a policy um, in place. Right. That that's that's have. why I was wanting I like what I knew we had a policy but I didn't <clears throat> If someone's just asking a question, I believe we should be right. able to answer that question without it being exactly. a formal complaint being asked and being filed. I think the limits are: Do you, if someone calls to ask a question, or even to complain and ask a question, mm -hmm. then that would be okay. the The limit is taking action, right? Like going to talk to the other candidate and saying you can't do that or whatever. In this case, it was just a matter of educating them. But, um, and I would say in this case, just hypothetically, <clears throat> an example of the wrong way to do it would be to notice it, say something to the candidate, and then take it to the prosecutor because that's a board decision. Um, now that complaint can also be filed, by the way, with directly with the prosecutor. They don't have to Correct. file that complaint with us and make us determine whether it goes to make it filed directly with the prosecutor's okay. office. Okay. Um, so, Else? 
Uh, I'd like to welcome Mr. Strasser to the Democratic Party chair. I probably wouldn't take it back over. But I did send out letters to both the party chairs for the election to fill the... And I've gotten, I've gotten the Republican Party's back and I'm sure Randy's was still, he said he was still working on it, so... I have no idea what you're, you didn't state what you're talking about. The list of poll workers. We'll have a meeting on Thursday night, should have it to you by Friday. Okay. And that's, I think they already had a meeting, that's why I already have... You're not going to wait until the night before? I don't, I don't have a meeting. Friday morning. I don't have to change this desk. Is that your requirements? I, I'm just... That was sarcastic. I'm not here to get crossways with anybody, whatever your requirements are. You're going to do them, right? I will tell you, just as a reminder, if they have a loved one that's on the ballot that's contested race, which you're okay this time around because there's no, there's not a Democrat ballot, they cannot serve as a poll worker. So like brother, sister, mother, daughter, granddaughter, they cannot be a poll worker if their spouse or family member is on the ballot. They could in a different area though, right? Like they can't serve in Delphi? No, we're vote centers, so no. Because you can live in Camden. That's the only thing wrong with vote centers. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that'd be the only, but again, the primary won't affect you because we don't have a, we don't, there's not a contested, contested races for Democrats. That's kind of tough here in Grove County because it's related to everything. You're right. Is that the notification? I mean, it was because everybody didn't know quite that. What do you mean? The family member, if they have a family member on the ballot. Is it common knowledge? She's telling you to be appointing people for the election day? Yeah. To work on the precinct boards? I understand that, but. But it's. It's state law. I mean, it's been that way. Yeah, I. When I ran for city council, my mother law said. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a Carroll County thing. When I ran, Denise could, well, she's on the election board. Because she couldn't work, she couldn't work on that. Right. That's right. Right. Where they're voting. Right, where they're voting. Sharon was actually waiting on the. Um, oh yes, I'm sorry. That was Democrat. Yeah. Um, annual report. I'm surprised that wasn't on there. So, I, I, so, so, so I'm yeah. asking, or not asking, but I just wanted to advise you that during the changes last year when it was turned in, the state actually told. Uh, the treasurer that it was due to the state and it didn't have to go to the county. So he didn't turn it into the county this time based on what he was told by the election uh, board member in uh, Indianapolis. So I contacted I Shannon. Um, we got the report. It was filled out the 20th of February and sent to the state, so I contacted um, uh, <laughs> I actually spoke with uh, Matthew Cochever Co 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 and talked to him about it and Matthew basically said that if, if we have a CFA 3 that's actually filed with the county, then we were correct and we do need to file with the state, but if we have a CFA 3 with the county, then we have to file with the county as well. So, uh, so you have the I previous, know. yeah, the previous chair and the secretary or the treasurer were not aware that we have a CFA 3 here. 
So in talking with Matthew 2, was a change of leadership that CFA 3 needs to be updated. Okay, moving so, and we, with that, I also reached out to Matthew because I had never heard of a CFA 3. So um, that was actually filed, the Democrat Party filed that um, in February of 2020 with the then clerk. Um, since then, they have continued to file their reports with us, so I didn't know that that was even a thing. Um, and I'm waiting to hear back from Matthew because he said the CFA 3 has to be filed, and then the next report after that, you have to disband. They're, the Democrats did not disband after they filed the CFA 3. I then intrigued me, so I went and looked at the Republican Party. The Republican Party is the exact same thing. They have filed a CFA 3, which means you don't report to the county. They have also filed five subsequent reports, and they did not disband. So I'm waiting to hear from Matthew to say who gets the reports, because I don't know. Because he said if the CFA 3 is filed and they disband, then all reports are filed with the state. But if we don't, disband, but if you don't disband, don't then you disband. still come to me. So that's why I'm confused, and that's why I sent that to Matthew to, to get clarification. That's he's he's, so, he's exactly right. The the the, 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 the instructions. Yeah, you've they, never filed with the state, so that's why I'm you know that and and like I said, had I had you not even mentioned that, I would have. Five reports filed after that, I would have never thought that there would have been a problem with you filing the reports. But with that file, now I'm like, well, what's a CFA 3? So I'm doing research going, I never even heard, I called Andrea, said, what's a CFA 3? She goes, I don't know, what is that? I don't know. It's a statement of organization. Right. It's so it's the same, it's the, yeah, yeah, it's basically the same. So yeah. you're saying because they just didn't disband, like Randy said, they have to file with both the state and the county? That is that is the way I understood Matthew no. to tell me, but no. I am no, they would still file with because me. because we actually Sorry. supported state and federal uh, candidates. We have to file with the state. Okay. So. But and, you have to disband also, first. Huh? But you have to disband with us first. Mm, that's not what he's. He he told okay. me. Well, that's that, why I sent clear because that's what he told me that. A CFA 3 is filed, and then their next report, they disband from you, and then they file everything with us, and then you no longer get the reports. That's that was a way of also an outgoing treasury report that needs to be filed. So, so can, I, yeah, can I, you I, share I, Matthew's no, what, what once once I get once yes. you get Matthew's response, yeah. you're yeah. going to have to stand in Yep. An official yeah. oh, chair. Chair. Okay. from the state. And, yeah, I mean, I and, and I don't, yeah, it's, I mean, this is the one that the Republican Party filed March of 21, um, and it was, it's for the treasurer, Cody Nelson. But I don't know how filing this one deletes the CFA force. Because this is just saying, here's our new treasurer. So it was an outgoing report, mm -hmm. and then I, was, I know that he had to file an out. I think it was you that told him he had to file an outgoing report. Yes, he has to file his other report, yeah. which he did. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but I, I don't. Or Josh, Josh did too. Yeah, so that that's the latest one is. No shortage of paperwork in the election. Well, these go back to 1989. There you go. <clears throat> so that, that, I am still waiting to hear, and when I get that email, I will forward that to you as well. Um, because that's where I'm, like I said, I didn't even know what a CFA, I thought everything is filed with us because that's how it's always been filed. Yeah. And if that's not the case, then the I'm CFA, going to the get CFA rid of four the is, is your financial report. Right. And the CFA 3 is your organization. So right. what what Matthew told me was that because we had uh, made contributions to state or federal candidates, mm -hmm. 
that, that required reason. us to actually file with the state, but because we actually had a CFA three filed with the county, then we were we have to file with both the state and the county. Yes. And he also said that when there's a change of treasurer or or any of your central committee, um, central committee that you need to do an amended yeah. CFA three. Right. Okay, so you still are required to send the CFA four to us. Yes. And so is it, that still it, due by the deadline? Yeah. It, it, yeah. Okay, and it's because they supported federal or state candidates. So I guess. And the Republicans are not in that same boat. No, we won't do that. So I guess then the question is, what do we do when they? Filed it, it filed with the with state, the, but yeah. they just filed it. Randy just sent it to me to be filed last week. Well, that, my question is, when was it filed with the state? February 20th. Which is the third of April, right? Yes. Okay. So, since we're having the discussion, even though it's not on the agenda, I would make a motion that we accept the date that they filed it with the state. And then we can still review that. Better yet, when is the next meeting? Is the uh, public the public press right? Is this that's not this Friday? Right? Oh, Friday. is it? Friday at yeah, six. On Friday. Oh wait a minute, spring break. I won't be here. I'm not even out of time. So, Friday okay. at six. So my thought <clears throat> is that we should probably address the the date that the report was filed. On the same day that we reviewed it, so, so is that something? Your where, motion? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the what happened on this was the prior year uh, they didn't file with the state, and they were late getting it to them. And when they filed it the year before, the state said, "No, you're only doing." state and federal candidates, all you have to do is file that report with the state. There was no comment at all about whether or not we had a CFA 3 filed with the county. So there was some confusion there, and Jason said, you know, to make sure he didn't get fined by the state again for being late, he, he did as he was told, and then in my conversation with Matt, Matt said, well, if, if you have a CFA 3 filed with the county, then you have to do both. And, which he, which and then, he and then My question was, is that something that we have to? Well, yes, if you're going to be supporting local candidates, you have to have that filed with the county, so you'll have to do both. Which he did. He, <clears throat> he filed two reports in 2022 with us. So, so that, how do you that's feel about I, just doing it on Friday, either before or after the public test? If you think it's too much, we can have another meeting. I'm just trying to make another meeting because we don't have time. I don't want to take time I right now to review that. I think we could. That. We could probably do. This meeting is going on. I think we could probably do. So Sandy and I can come in and. <clears throat> Excuse me, review the report uh, ahead of time, not together. Or um, I could just email you the report. Oh, that'll work. That way you can. And then we'll, we'll address the, the lateness, until it's lateness, and, and uh, if we find anything on the report, we can address that at the same time. But it shouldn't take. Super long have to review it ahead of time. Is that okay to do since 
I'm looking at you, Debbie. <laughs> Since we've already scheduled the other meeting mm -hmm. on Friday at six. She's talking about notification. That's I know what she's talking about. It, is it, I guess, appropriate or proper to have the other business item when we're doing the public test? If I were you, I would give me notice that you were going to meet fi Friday at 5.30 or quarter to six or something right. like that and make okay. it a separate meeting. Have you already filed the agenda? What the agenda is? There, there is no. It's a public there. test. It's a public test. Of the voting so there machines. Is, there is no. Yeah. It's a meeting, but it's not. Yeah, it's, that's right. yeah. yeah. Test, it's a yeah. meeting, but not a. We don't usually discuss any other business. Okay. So you want to do 545, 530? Um, what do you want to do after the public test? Let's do it after. Okay. So, 7, 6, well. Uh, if we set it for 6.30 and we run over on the other one? No problem. Okay, let's set it for 6.30. I mean, the public access counselor says, you know, 15 minutes. Oh. I'm, I'm a little more liberal than that, yeah. yeah. I heard that about you. Huh? I heard that about you, liberal. I am. I'm a hippie. That's the only patience you have. You should be able to weasel that right in. Yeah, that's sure. true. In this email. So, hey, Sharon, I, I, I appreciate the communications and everything with you, and I've been around these for 20 some years now, so I'm familiar. And I know Denise was chair before, and she's had communications with people that, at the state, so uh, <clears throat> I'm here to make sure that we do everything on the end on time. I, Maybe a suggestion, and, and I know you're busy, and this, this actually came up just a little while ago, and you're elected at your office, you do as you please, but I, I know in previous years when I was running and those reports were due in, uh, previous, and I'm not talking about one, I know that there were at least two different times with, with other clerks that they actually sent out a notice uh, prior to those reports. And I don't know whether you do that or not. Well, I talked to Sandy. Yeah, we do. And I talked to Sandy because I didn't know where to send it. I didn't know. She said the, the central oh, committee yeah. had changed. And I did, I'm like, well, can you find out where I need to send this? Because I don't know who to send it to. Yeah, she actually brought that up in the last meeting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't, I, I, didn't know, I didn't know who to contact to say, hey, the report's due. You should. <laughs> yeah, you should, you should have a. Yeah, I don't have any of that. I have no central committee. What's, what's on that report? The CFA three. Well, statement of organization is that. Mm -hmm. is that the yeah, CFA? on the last report, yes, Jason signed it, but that didn't mean that Jason was still on the. I didn't know if he was still the contact person. And that's why I asked Sandy because I didn't know. She said the central committee had changed. So I did not know. I mean, well, okay. that all, all you had. have is a, the paperwork that's there. I mean, that's yeah. uh, that's sent it to work, uh, but. Uh, We'll have that updated CFA uh, three for you in a minute. Okay. So and then uh, and I believe you I'll probably your, need okay. one for everyone that's changed because I think there's only a spot. There's only a spot for one person. There, there's only one change. Oh, okay. So it's just the that you. Yeah. Okay. Everybody else is intact. Okay. Perfect. All it all it, it asks for on the CFP three is the uh, uh, chair and the uh, treasurer. Okay. Okay. That works. And I'll, I should uh, have uh, when that when we get that signed, then uh, which will be Thursday. Uh, if I don't go Friday, it'll be Friday morning. It'll be Monday. Uh, Current uh, precinct committee list too. That'd be great. It's not complete yet, but okay, that'd close. be great. Yeah, I, I think the newest, the last one that we had that was complete is 1997, I believe. It was either 97 or 2007. I can't remember which, but it's been a long time. <laughs> it's it's very outdated, and there's lines through it. The one that I've got is I was lines through it. Nope. <clears throat> okay, not on the agenda, but 
I make a motion as to be dismissed the meeting. I'll second motion. All in favor? Aye.